This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. A wonderful day in late summer. The air crisp and clear as one more convoy comes up the English Channel. Twelve little merchantmen bringing to Britain the sinews of war. Protected by slim destroyers, swift and watchful as a sheepdog guarding the flock. There is ominous quiet in the air, until suddenly the peace is shattered by the roar. From those French ports that now lie beneath the rule of the Nazi comes a ceaseless barrage, heavy shelling. The Nazi plane is spotting for the gunners on the shore. But the spotter is soon chased away by the RAF. Guns are hurling their tons of exploding metal at the little ships in the Straits of Dover. But the little ships never waver. They hold their course. Look well and see how the convoy holds its ranks like a regiment of crack troops. Each succeeding shell whips up the sea into a frenzied waterspout. But look you well and see how the ships march on. See how the masters and their crews keep to their appointed stations. They never turn aside, they never falter. They call this place Hell's Corner. But there is no hell within the bounds of a man's imagination that could prove too hot for their cold courage. See all this and be proud to be sons and daughters of a race that can breed such men as these. Out of the ranks there springs the escort of destroyers. The order rings down from the bridge, make smoke. And the channel waters arch beneath the bows of those destroyers, thrusting along the line. The funnels pouring out a dense pall of black, screening the target from the German gunners on the shore. Destroyers are perfect for a job like this, as they are for a thousand other jobs. And that is why we could use some of that surplus from America. Britain has plenty for present needs and we are building plenty more. But for the expanding offensive program of 1941, we can use more still. You can never have too many destroyers. Bombardment gets heavier, and surely that's a hit. No, when all the splash has died away, the ship is sailing serenely on. The danger from bombs is not forgotten, even in this inferno of shelling. In addition to smoke from funnels, the destroyers drop smoke floats on the water. And all the time, they race up and down, the Navy nursing its precious charges, supremely courageous, superlatively efficient. Well, just the British Navy. The little 
ships are doing their bit to help. Like a small boy who proudly imitates his elder brother, some of the convoy joins in making smoke. For 90 minutes, that convoy passed under the hail of more than 100 shells. You've read that not one ship was hit. This is the proof. They ran the gauntlet from Boulogne to Calais, and they came through into calm waters without injury. Once again, the Navy was there. But soon after the bombardment ended, German bombers roared overhead. The convoy once again became a target. Destroyers and merchantmen put up a blazing barrage. The bombers were attacking, but the ships were attacking too. Spitfires came hurtling into battle. The barrage died away and the RAF took over. And that battle ended with the Nazis racing back home. <laughs> 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 